Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of After the Whistle. This is our first season in episode 10 of the podcast. Today is Wednesday, October 16, 2019, and we're experiencing some cool weather, and it does feel like football time in Tennessee. It's hard to believe that just a few weeks ago, we were experiencing 95-degree temperatures. On today's podcast, we're going to recap Kingston's big victory over Scott County 20 to nothing. Huge region win for the Yellow Jackets that sets them up nicely for playoff contention. They're 2-1 and one now in the region. We also are going to recap the Tennessee-Mississippi State game from last week. Tennessee gets a big win, 20-10. to 10. Nice to get a victory at Neyland Stadium, and the crowd was electric during that game. It was a fun game to be at. We have a special guest, Seth Strahan, that will join us. We're excited to have him on the podcast. And finally, we're going to do our special shout-outs and our pick segments. So we hope that you'll listen and enjoy another edition of After the Whistle. Okay, guys, before we recap the Kingston-Scott County game, I'd like to go over the scores from last week's action on Thursday night, Austin East defeated Gatlinburg Pittman 32 17. Pigeon Forge gets their first win of the year. They beat Northview 28 8. Last Friday night's action, Oliver Springs defeated Sunbright 49 6. Harriman squeaked by Midway 21 20. It was Greenback defeating Cofield 45 20. Rockwood was all over Cumberland County 37 14. Fulton got their first win of the year. They beat Clinton 36-13. Welcome back to After the Whistle. I'm your co-host Jody Maduski alongside... Brad Luttrell and Jeff Huffman. Guys, let's talk about the Kingston victory over Scott County last week. Uh, They win 20 to nothing. They come off a bye week. Huff, the game started off kind of slow, had some penalties throughout. They played well after a short period of time, got the big victory, big region win for Jackets. Talk a little bit about the offense. Yeah, Jody, uh, Friday night homecoming region game. It was a big win for the Jackets. And like you said, um, wasn't the, the Christmas game in the world. A little sloppy, mistakes, um, kept the offense from putting up big points, but, you know, they scored enough to win, 20 to nothing. Uh, maybe a little rust from being off a week. You know, I don't know, but like I said, they made the plays when it counted. Uh, on offense Friday night, uh, Elijah Hill was out, so Preston Quiet stepped up big time Friday night. I thought he had a very good game on offense. Also, uh, Marcus Rose continued his what he does on Friday nights, and he had another touchdown Friday, and – Luke Warren had seven catches Friday night, which is good to see. Uh, and also, um, and also Carson Donathan had a score Friday night. So it was overall a good game for the offense, uh, getting back into swing of things. Hopefully that'll ride into Friday night. But uh, thought it was a good game for Kingston. So uh, Brad, uh, let's talk about the defense and pitching that shutout Friday. Yeah, if, like you said, the big region win. You had to have that one. That was a Big win over Scott County, and defense was dominant. You know, get, anytime you get a shutout, that's really good. Uh, Dante Hammond had a pick six, which is always good for the defense. And him and Will Moore, they've done a good job at safety this year. You don't notice them too much, uh, but, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That means they're not getting beat deep. And uh, so they've done a good job. And uh, Preston Quiet, you talked about his offensive game Friday, Huff, but he also had a really good defensive game and got uh, WBR Defensive Player of the Week, and that's the – Third yellow jacket this year to get it, along with uh, Trey Schultz and Landon Diggs. So, man, the defense is doing really good, and uh, guys got a big game coming up this week. Sets Kingston up nicely in the region. They go to two two and one on the season. But of course, we'll talk a little bit about the Alcoa game coming up this Friday. Uh, but they've got Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg Pittman guys after that. And uh, if you can get one or two games, man, you're set up nice for the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the Alcoa game, it's going to be a tall task. Um, you know, you, you go in, you hope, but, you know, it's going to be tough. So, Pigeon Forge the following week, that's, that's 
really a playoff game. Very you, winnable game. Very winnable. You win that, you're in the playoffs. Then you're played in GP the last game of the season for seeding. So hopefully Jackets will be able to take care of business in two weeks. But I guess let's worry about Alcoa first. Yeah, uh, Pigeon Forge game, you got to win that one. I mean, that gets you in the playoffs, so that's a big game. And, and if you can beat GP, you finish third. But even if you don't, you're still in the playoffs. Uh, guys, Alcoa, I mean, you know, you guys, we've talked about this before. I hate Alcoa about as bad as anybody. Uh, you can't convince me that a school that size can be that good every year in football without doing some shady stuff. So uh, that's just my <laughs> opinion on it, and that's the way I think. And uh, you can't convince me otherwise. But anyways – they're one of the top programs in the state every year, and that's just the way it is. And, uh, you know, they're going to be hard to beat, but uh, hopefully we can shock the world, Jody. It's time for the uh, TWSAA to do something, move yeah. those jokers up. I totally agree. Get them out of this region. But, uh, guys, good takes on the game last week, and we'll be back in a few minutes, and we'll talk about the upcoming Alcoa game. Let me. They gonna tell the story with from me. God's plan. God's plan. I hope that sometimes I won't. Yeah. I feel good sometimes I don't. Welcome back to After the Whistle. I'm your co-host Jody Maduski alongside Brad Luttrell, Jeff Huffman. Now it's time for our pick segment. We've got our student athletes here tonight. Will, good job getting them all rounded up again tonight. Let's talk about Kingston Alcoa game Friday night. What's your prediction? Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Dad. You know, Kingston's on a good high streak, four games in a row that they have won. I think they're going to ride it out and win 28-27. Alcoa is going to miss an extra point. Nice pick. All right, we've got Bryson Bowles in the house. What do you say, young man? Well, I think Kingston's going to start off pretty hard. I think they'll get out to a lead, but I think Alcoa is just too good. 28-14, uh, Alcoa. Ooh. All right, we've got Mr. Harper Neal here. What would you say, young man? Well, you know, uh, I think Alcoa is really good. They always are, and um, – I think we're having a good year, but I just think they're too good. I think they're going to win 35-14. 35-14 bad guys. I got it. All right. Brady Luttrell's in the house. What do you say, young man? Yeah, Jody. Uh, defense is playing really well right now. They're really hot. I got faith in them. I'm going to say 20-14 to 14 jackets. Nice pick. All right. We've got Mr. James Curry in the house. What do you say, young man? Uh, be real with you. Just go 49-12, uh, maybe. <laughs> we might get 12. We'll miss two extra points even if we do score two times. Oh, well, I'm going to cut you off right there, dog. I appreciate the pick. All right, Braden Hardup, what do you say, young man? I'm going to say I'll come at 35, Kingston 7. 35 to 7. No love, huh? Well, all right, get in here, Brad. Get in here, Huff. Let's talk about it a little bit. It, you know, we are talking about number one team in the state again. So, Brad. Don't hold back this time, okay? Let's well, tell us how you really feel. Well, Jody, I'm going to say this. I'm not going to pick Kingston to win, but I'm not picking Alcoa either. I'm abstaining because I hate Alcoa that bad. Nice. All right. How I, about that? That, that? That's all right. All right, Huff, what do you say? Well, I mean, Alcoa, we know what they are. Uh, it'd take a Herculean effort for Kingston Friday night to go up there and pull out a W. I'm, well, all my heart, I'm, I'm for the Jackets. I, I hope they can do it. I hope I'm wrong because in my head, I've got to say Alcoa is the better team. But, no, I agree early with what Brady was saying about the defense. Uh, Kingston's defense has played very strong this year, so I, I do think that they're going to play Alcoa a little tougher than what people may think, I hope. I'm going to say Alcoa 35, Kingston 13. Jody, one more thing. Uh Big key to this game is keep everybody healthy. I just hope we don't uh, – I've watched Alcoa play a couple times. Man, they're borderline dirty. Uh, they'll take – they'll play through the whistle. Not to the whistle, but through it. So, I hope our kids uh, protect themselves and uh, stay healthy for Pigeon Forge. Yeah, we got a long season ahead, Brad, and that's a good point. You, you know, you don't you don't want to see anybody get hurt in this ball game. Alcoa is the powerhouse, obviously, in the region. and uh, But, guys, I, I can't pick them to win. I'll go with my heart instead of with my head this time, and I'm going to go like a couple of them said. I, I think Kingston gets to win 27-24. Big victory for the Yellow Jackets, I hope. Hey, if that happens, Joe, we're going up to Alcoa, and we might turn on the goalpost or something. What do you think? <laughs> Bring the goalpost down to Kingston. That's yeah. what we'd like to do right there. Guys, good takes and good picks, and we'll be back shortly. We're pleased to be joined by number 75 starting center for the Yellow Jackets, sophomore Seth Strahan. 
Seth, thanks for being on the show. Hey, no problem, Jody. I'm glad to be here. Hey, Seth, talk a little bit about the, how the season's going so far this year, 2019. You got the big victory against Harriman, and uh, you dropped two close games. Uh, and we all know you're on a big four-game winning streak. Talk a little bit about the season so far this year. Well, uh, I think mentally and physically we're prepared now than we were at the beginning of the season because we came out and we lost to Oliver Springs. We had our heads high. We were a little cocky because we beat one count – County rivalry already, Harriman. So we just thought we were going to come out here and breeze through Over Springs, but that wasn't the case. Well, yeah, you took it on a chin. You played well. Um, you guys played Austin East uh, real tight. The game was close in the fourth quarter. Uh, was in pretty uh, pretty impressive ball game. Uh, you came up a little bit short, uh, but since then it seems like you guys are clicking well, especially on the offensive line. Oh, definitely the offensive line. I mean. There's no other brotherhood on the team that's as close as the offensive line is. We're all there. We're all we're all mentally and physically sharp with each other. We we all uh, combine to make a really good five man front. That's that's good stuff right there, Seth. Uh, I consider you a seasoned veteran, being a sophomore. You got thrown in first game as a freshman last year. Talk a little bit about going out on the field for the first time as a freshman in a big game against a counter rivalry, Harriman. I mean, getting thrown in the second quarter, it was definitely nerve-wracking. I was the only freshman out on the field for both sides of the ball. And um, it was just – it was something else because it, uh, it definitely gave me some preparation for where I am today mentally and physically. So uh, I'm real glad that happened. That's good stuff, man. Uh, I know you, you faced some bumps along the way your freshman year, but it's prepared you to be a, a more – physical, more mentally tough player this year, and uh, I think you're seeing the results of that this year. Oh, uh, we definitely are. I mean, coming out, we've uh, we've really gotten stronger. We really know the plays a lot better. We're executing everything just fine right now, but uh, there's still room for some improvement for uh, everybody on the team, and uh, I think we just need to notice that a little bit more. Hey, Seth, man, thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome back to After the Whistle. I'm your co-host, Jody Maduski, alongside Brad Luttrell, Jeff Huffman. We have our student athlete, Will Maduski here. Will would like to say something. Um, yes, I will, Jody. Thank you. We have some breaking news that Seth Strahan has won player of the game against the Scott County Highlanders. Tell me a little bit about that performance. Well, uh, that's news to my ears, Will. I haven't heard of that yet. And, uh, you know, I'm really, uh, I'm really glad that I got that, you know, just going out there and trying to do the best I can. It's uh, really great somebody seeing that. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations, Seth. Player of the Game Award uh, in the Rome County News. Stop by and uh, get you one of those papers. Yes, I am an old geek that still likes to look at the newspaper, so I saw it in there today. So congratulations. Thank you. Okay, Seth, uh, how about talking a little bit about your relationship with Kane Collins? You guys have uh, got a lot of history with each other. Maybe goes back to the middle school days. Just talk a little bit about the way you guys practice together and what you do outside of practice and just your overall relationship with your quarterback. Oh, yeah, definitely, Jody. I mean, coming in seventh grade year, I was being the starting center, and uh, he got moved to quarterback. And uh, we've we've had a top bond since then, you know. We've had that quarterback-center bond, and uh, that's something hard to break because we're just so used to each other that uh, once you throw somebody in, in that mix with us, it's kind of a uh, it's kind of hard to get used to him, and uh, you know he might have moved away freshman year, but uh, coming back sophomore year, we already had all those memories, and uh, we're still used to each other. So there was nothing to really get used to. He's just he's there, and I'm there, and it's just, it's just working out for us. You guys are doing a little bit of work on the side. Kane said that uh, you guys are taking extra snaps after practice is over with, which is always a good thing. Anytime you can get any extra work in, that's that's good. So. Good job on that. Keep up the, the extra work that you're doing. Oh, yeah, always. It's it's always good to put in a little bit of extra work just to get used to each other. You know, we haven't seen each other for a little bit, but we're definitely getting better with each other as the season goes on. All right, Seth, man, thank you. I got one last question for you. All right, Seth, uh, I got one final question for you, and I want you to be totally honest with me, okay? I don't know if you remember or not, but back when you were about five and six years old, you played Little League Baseball, and I was actually the coach of your baseball team. You played for the Rockhounds. It was a it was a team that was known 
statewide. You guys were pretty good. I don't know if you remember that or not. Do you remember that? Uh, I, I remember that team. Oh, okay, good. Well, we used to play music during warm-ups. And every time we played music, you would always dance out there on the field. I mean, you were the first one, and you were dancing pretty good. So in your honest opinion, do you think that we'll ever see you on Dancing with the Stars? No, Jody. Uh, that's going to be a hard no. <laughs> uh, I might be able to dance. It might have been cute when I was little, but now it's just it just looks weird. Well, no, I... You, you put on some moves, so I think you ought to give it a shot. Keep it in the back of your mind later on down the road. You hey, you bet, it might be pretty good at it. Uh, who knows? Hey, man, thanks for being on the show. We appreciate you. Good luck the rest of the season. And uh, go out and, and uh, take care of Alcoa this Friday night. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you, Jody. Tennessee. Lord, I've really been real stressed Down and out, losing tracks Although I am black and brown The problem got me pessimistic Welcome back to After the Whistle. I'm your co-host Jody Maduski alongside Brad Luttrell, Jeff Huffman. Guys, let's talk about the big win Tennessee got last week over Mississippi State. Tennessee gets the victory 20-10. to 10. Um, Huff, offensively, um, Maurer starts off. Uh, doesn't play the greatest, but he doesn't put us in a situation where I thought the game was in jeopardy at all. Uh, you know, it was 10-3 at halftime. Uh, Maurer gets hurt right before halftime, and J.G. has to come in. But for the most part, nice run by Tim Jordan early to get us on the scoreboard. We had the lead. Uh, never felt like the game was in jeopardy, but Maurer goes out for an injury. You get a little concerned about that. Tell us a little bit about the offense, what you thought. Yeah, Jody, uh, Saturday, Tennessee. Not, first of all, nice to talk about a victory for a change. Absolutely. You know, that is a much-needed victory. Okay. So, I mean, that's great to talk about. And let's get back to the offense. Uh, yeah, Maurer come out, you know, made a big throw early down the middle, seam, hit Dominic Wood Anderson. Um, and like I said, he, he made some mistakes, made t um, freshman mistakes that he's got to – Reel them in, but you know you got. Well, that's what they were. They're fresh mistakes. They were, and uh, but you know, like I said, I've been critical of JG this year. You know, been wanting Mauer to play, and I still think he showed Saturday that he brings you that spark. You know, he makes some plays. You know, he makes a mistake, but he also makes some plays too. And um, you know, the one play where he got hurt, he was trying to make a play, and it was just unfortunate. You know, injury that happened, and he had to come out of the game. And I'll give JG a lot of credit. You know, I've been critical of him, and I believe it was some deserved criticism. Absolutely. But, but, Saturday, but Saturday, you know, he came in in a situation where we had the lead and uh, didn't do didn't make any mistakes and was able to make a few big plays here and there and, and able to get Tennessee the victory over Saturday, a much-needed victory. So I, I was very happy with what went on. And uh, that gives the, you know the season some hope, keeps the season alive. You know this week with Standy, you know bowl game is still in play. Absolutely, and and Huff, you know how it works when the offense is is taking care of the ball and they're moving down the field. You give your defense a little time to rest, and and then the defense has the game of their life as well. Oh, no question about it. And Brad will tell us about the defense here in just a second. But man, hats off to those guys. I mean, they've been playing well all season, but Saturday. They look like a different team. I mean, they come out balling. And, Brad, before you get started, man, you know, I saw a stat before Saturday's game, Tennessee was tied for last with Texas A&M and Vanderbilt for number of sacks in the SEC and showed out Saturday. Yeah, we doubled our sack total, Jody. We went from 8 to 16, I think. And uh, Crazy. that was definitely the best game of the year for the defense, just – all over the quarterbacks, all in the backfield. I think we had 10 tackles for loss, three interceptions. Uh, granted, Mississippi State's not the best opponent, but uh, when your defense plays that good, you can't complain about it. And uh, like you said, Maurer, uh, you know, he gives you a spark. And that one play he ran out of the pocket and did the spin move, I mean, that was just a nice play. Very and athletic. Very athletic. And uh, he's got the arm. He did make two freshman mistakes in the red zone, but – you learn from that. You know, mm -hmm. next time he'll watch film. I know the first interception, Jody, uh, I was watching a replay on TV. 
And uh, me and you went to the game, by the way, and great atmosphere and had a good time with our sons. But uh, I recorded the game and was watching the replay. And the announcers were talking about the cornerback bailed on uh, Callaway and went back and intercepted the ball. Mauer will see that in the film, and next time he'll check down to Callaway and get a first down and uh, won't throw that pick. So I'm not down on Mauer at all. I, think, I still think he's a starter. But Huff and I'm like, you you got to give J.G. some credit. He come in, only threw one incomplete, and that one hit Jennings in the hands, which Jennings usually catches those. Right. And uh, he didn't force nothing, didn't make any mistakes, which is what you hope. It's kind of conservative game plan when he came in the game. But uh, he got us to the finish line with a victory. And uh, But the defense guys, they just they just showed up and balled out. No, no question. And, and also, but, but like you said about J.G., you know, that was the game plan. They knew it. that's the way they was going in the second half was – Kind of manage it, limit the mistakes because the defense yeah. was rolling. So and it worked out to a T. So I mean, they a great job to the coaches as well. So go ahead, Joe. And, and Brad, you know, I was joking Saturday when we, with you at the game, uh, and, and it's clear to me. And I don't know much about football, but you know, when JG's in the ball game, it looks like it's page one of the playbook, and yeah, that's all they go. They don't yeah. they don't go away from that page, and that's all he gets. With Mauer in the game. He gets three pages of the playbook, yeah. and it, it just it looks like everybody responds when he's back there under center. Yeah, Jody, like you said, that when JG's in the game, it was a very conservative game plan. I think the first eight or nine plays were run plays, and uh, so they're not trusting him a whole lot, but what they did trust him with, he did well. Well, and I'll give him credit, too. I'm like Huffman. I was critical of him early on. It just it looked just dry. It didn't look – you know, impressive. Like he had control of the offense, Huffman, in my opinion. And but I'll give him credit. He turned it around, and we had to have him in the second half. There's no question. And and I never thought for a second the game was in jeopardy at all. Uh, you know, I didn't like the three yard outs all the time, but he did what we needed him to do. Exactly. And that that was the game plan. They just didn't want to make any mistakes. Kept the you know just played a little field position game. Relied on the defense. The defense stepped up. And, and one other thing, too, getting back to Maurer, but in some of them be talking about the spark he gives and um, the energy he brings to the team, even when he got hurt in the second half, he's on the sidelines pumping up his teammates. I mean, he's going to the defensive players, talking to them, the offensive line, JG, all of them, you know, being a cheerleader, so to speak. You know, he, you know, a lot of players, you know, would sit on the sideline if they're hurt, not going back in. But he's over there encouraging and fired up. And that showed me a lot. And I was, you know, that's encouraging. You know, I think he's a good teammate, and I think that's why the players seem to, you know, rally around him a little bit, you know, for the spark. Even though he's a freshman, I think that uh, bodes well for Tennessee as we go forward. Well, Jody, you said you, uh, you never were really worried about the outcome of the game, but I'm telling you, when Mississippi State cut that 13-10 to 10 in the fourth quarter, I had flashbacks of BYU, and I looked at you and I said, we're going to blow another one. <laughs> But, guys, we – man, that drive we had, the 91-yard drive, that was big time. And uh, Tyler Bird, too, we got to give a shout-out to him. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That kid, yeah, yeah, no question. He is stuck around here for four years, not got to play a whole lot. And uh, he balled out Saturday. And, man, I felt good for him. He got that big catch and touchdown to seal the game. Huge, huge play right there. And, 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 uh, and I'd be crazy not to say I didn't have the same thoughts as well. But uh, – We all did. Let's you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and Tyler – Makes a great catch. JG gets it to him, and uh, just an all-around great play. And was happy for him as well. Absolutely, you know, a lot of kids nowadays. We live in the world of transfers. Right. You know, a lot of, you know, and it's easy to do because you want to play. I mean, you do. So, you know, a lot of kids would have packed up and moved on somewhere else, get some playing time. But he stuck around and made a big play to help us win a game. So, yeah, I'm very happy for him. And shout out to him. Good job, Tyler. Guys. Great takes about the game last week and, uh, uh, you know, a big task at hand next week. Uh, this Saturday, actually, is uh, Alabama and Tennessee. Uh, it's going to be a tough task. Yeah, no no doubt about it. I mean, Alabama's number one in the country for a reason. Just hope that the uh, team can get through this week with no injuries, get past this game, move on to next week. Um Focus, you know, get to South Carolina and, you know, try to build on the success from Mississippi State, play tough this week, and see if we can't get six wins this week, this year, and make a bowl game. Well, Jody and Huff, uh, we all know what the third Saturday in October means. Uh, we grew up in it. 
And even back when we were younger, when Tennessee was losing, it was still a competitive game and uh, really close a lot of years, heartbreakers. But then we went on a long winning streak against them, which was just awesome. But now it's just, I don't know, guys, it's just like you almost feel like uh, you just like to get rid of the game almost. Uh, I hate to say that, but it's just not competitive right now. And, uh, boy, I hope we can do something to – change that but right now it just don't look very good well hang in there brad you know uh if if the season turns around like we think it's going to be get you six wins get you an extra month of practice get your 20 recruits in here man we're not far from it and uh we're just we're just gonna have to see what it's not fun right at the moment but uh we got to just keep thinking ahead and looking ahead and hopefully this thing changes here soon enough Guys, good takes. We'll be back with our pick segment. Welcome back to After the Whistle. Now it's time for our college pick segment. We've got our student athletes here. Will, lead us off. we got a tough matchup this Saturday. It's at 9 p.m. Uh, that sucks that your bedtime's 8.45, but we'll let you know what happens the next morning. But give us your pick. Uh, you know, I made a bet with somebody that I work out with that if we had two or less turnovers, I'd get my long hair back. So I'm hoping we have at least five turnovers so I do not have to get my long hair back. So I'm going to say Alabama 45, Tennessee 14. Gross. Boo. Boo pick on that. All right. Brady Luttrell, what do you say, young man? Yeah, Jody, um, defense has been playing pretty good, uh, especially against Mississippi State. Uh, I think they're going to do the same this week, give Alabama a little bit of a test. I'm going to say Alabama 34, Tennessee 21. Nice. All right, Mr. Harper, Neil, what do you say? Uh, I think we're playing pretty good right now. I think it's going to be closer than everybody thinks. I think uh, Bama 35, Tennessee 27. Nice. All right. A player two there, man, and Tennessee gets a victory. Braden, what do you say? I mean – I think Alabama's defense is down, so we might be able to score a little bit. I'm going to say 17, Tennessee. What's the score for Alabama? 35. 35? 35. 17? Yeah. 35-17, bad guys. All right, Curry, what do you say, young man? Uh, to be honest with you, 52, 7, at Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. I hope it's not that bad. It's that bad. Hey, hey Curry, before you take off now, a big ball game that that you got a lot of interest in, Penn State and Michigan, man. Give us your lowdown. Give us your take on that. Uh, it's at Happy Valley. I, I just don't think Jose Patterson's going to come in and really do too much to our defense. Our defense, one of the top defenses in in college football right now. So, I think uh, Penn State's going to go thirty one seventeen. Thirty one seventeen over Michigan. Nice. All right. All right, Brad. Huffman, get in here. Let's go ahead and get our picks. So, Will Huff, won't you lead us off with the what? What's your prediction for the game Saturday? Well, uh, we all know Alabama is one of the best teams in football. It's, even though I hate to admit it, because I can't stand them, but they also have a great quarterback who's hopefully going to be my future Miami Dolphin quarterback, Tua. Uh, hope he has a bad game this week, though. But, no, honestly, though, I do think Tennessee's defense has been playing really good the last few weeks. They balled out against Mississippi State. I think you'll see that same type of effort. And uh, I agree. I don't think Alabama's going to put up the points that they've been putting up. I think Tennessee will find a way to score a couple touchdowns, keep it close for a while. And I think Alabama pulls away late. Alabama wins 38-17. 38-17. All right, Brad. What do you say? Well, Jody, uh, Alabama's defense is probably the worst defense they've had since Saban's been there. Uh, I th think I read their rush defense has been top ten every year since Saban's been, been there, but this year they're right around 50 or so, and uh, their secondary is not very good either. But having said that, their quarterback and receivers are just unbelievable. And that running back they got, that Harris kid, he seems like he's been there for eight years. I mean, good grief. He seems like he's been there forever. So I see a high sc a higher scoring game than you guys. Uh, I I'm gonna say as bad as I hate to say because I hate Alabama about as bad as I do Alcoa, and you guys know how much how bad I hate Alcoa. But uh, similar logos, by the way. Yeah, same logos, same kind of colors, the whole deal. But uh, I'm gonna say 
Alabama 52, Tennessee 27. I think we cover, if that means anything. Nice, nice. Well, and, and I'm like you, Brett. I think Alabama's defense is down a little bit. I think I heard them say that they got four true freshmen on defense, which we need to try to expose them as much as possible. And, um, you know, our defense is starting to click a little bit. Um, they got the top three receivers in the country, oh, in my it's opinion. It's unbelievable. It's man. unbelievable how good these guys are, and, and it's going to be a tough task for our, for our guys. Um, Brad, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull one of your cards, and uh, I, I'm gonna refuse to pick this ball game because I'm go. never gonna pick Alabama to win. Um, here's one. I'll go Tennessee three, Alabama nothing. How about that? <laughs> we go. shut them out, <laughs> guys. Thanks. Good good takes on the pick segment. Welcome back to the podcast. It's time now for our special shout out segment. Uh, Huffman, won't you lead us off today? All right. I got a couple shout outs this week. Uh, first one goes to uh, Coach Jeremy Pruitt. Um, this past week, uh, it was on Inside the SEC after the Mississippi State game. It showed a video of him um, at halftime giving a speech to, uh, to the team. And uh, it was pretty good to see. You know, a lot of people, he have criticized him, uh, maybe not a ton, I guess, a lot, but there's been some criticism of him saying that, of how he acts like he don't care on his coaches show each week, you know, kind of with a, just a stoic look on his face. And there's been some people saying, oh, he's an Alabama guy, he don't want to be here and all that stuff. And uh, watching that video of him trying to talk to his team, get them fired up, tell them what they want to do the second half, uh, you know, that shows me, if you watch the video, that's a coach that wants to win. The, he he had that show you know he wants to be here as a big win against Mississippi State he he wants to win and I think that hopefully quieted some of the haters out there that's been criticizing of Coach Pruitt and hopefully he, we stick around because like I said we need a coach who's going to be here you know the coaching carousel revolving door ain't going to work so we need him to be successful so we can get this program back so that's my shout out for him this week and also my other shout out goes to the South Carolina Gamecocks. Their big upset win over Georgia this past Saturday um, was awesome to see. I can't stand Georgia. They're the most hated team for me in the SEC over Alabama and Florida. So anytime Georgia gets beat, it makes me happy. So good job, Gamecocks. And and South Carolina tried every way in the world to give it to that, Georgia. They did. They did. They did. So, um, Brad, I'll go ahead and give my shout-out before we get to you. My shout-out goes to the Tennessee – student section. Brad, you and I got to sit in section I, row 30, and our boys came down, and we just had a great time in that section. The students were electric. The atmosphere was electric. Uh, it was just a fun day at Needland. Well, it was. Those guys right behind us, Jody, they were fun, and uh, we had a good time with them, and it was really exciting. Well, we, you know, and my shout-out also goes to the usher who didn't kick us out of, our, of that section. <laughs> because he did see my ticket around my neck and asked me what I was doing. But uh, I said, hey, I'm coming back. Section I, row 30 is a great well, place Joe, to we be. We blended in, right? Oh, I mean, hey, yeah. we were students at one well, time. Yeah, we were students at one time. But uh, my shout-outs this week, uh, one goes to Lamonte Turner. He got picked uh, preseason second team all ACC for the basketball season, so good job for him. And, guys, my other one goes to Jason Garrett, head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, he's so horrific at his job that he's going to get fired later on this year. And I'm going to get my dream and get uh, Lincoln Riley as the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys from Oklahoma, guys. And well, after that happens, the damn Cowboys will be in the Super Bowl pretty soon. How about that? Oh, my goodness. Well, that, that that's pretty good, Brad. Um, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, Huff, anything else you want to add to that? I don't – I think I'm good, man. That's hard to follow yeah. that one. That was a good one, Brad. Thanks. Guys, good job on the shout-outs. Hey, we'll see you on the radio next week.